In response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the U.S. and allies have attempted a stranglehold on Russian banks, companies, and oligarchs. But some wonder, what makes an oligarch? And how did they become so rich? The classic definition of an oligarch would include social and political influence. But since the war began, most of Russia's billionaires have little or no sway with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Russia's original oligarchs made their fortunes in the 1990s, during the chaotic aftermath of the Soviet Union's collapse. State assets were offloaded to private bidders, often in corrupt deals. This was a period of market liberalization, where businessmen, former officials, and entrepreneurs acquired large stakes in Russian oil and gas, mining, transportation, agricultural products, and other core industries. Between 1992 and 1994, the newly independent Russian Federation ran a voucher privatization effort. Under the program, shares of some 15,000 state-owned firms were made available to private buyers. Its aim was to allow ordinary Russians to buy shares. Instead, well-connected businessmen acquired blocks of vouchers, giving them large or controlling stakes in firms. Under the program, two-thirds of all privatized shares came to be held by company insiders, according to a 1999 International Monetary Fund study. Russia's 1998 financial crisis was a temporary setback for the oligarchs. Soaring commodity prices and Russia's increasing economic integration into the West in the 2000s minted dozens of new tycoons. Some newer oligarchs became wealthy through their ties to Putin, who has ruled Russia in one form or another since 2000. In 2001, Russia had eight billionaires worth a collective $12.4 billion. Ten years later, there were 101 billionaires worth $432.7 billion, according to Forbes data. Putin has both enriched and punished oligarchs, treating them as pawns in his political chess matches. Mikhail Khodorkovsky, then Russia's richest man, was arrested in 2003 for tax crimes after he supported Putin's political rival. Khodorkovsky said the charges were fabricated, and he was pardoned and released in 2013. The oligarchs learned their wealth was conditional on obedience to Putin, but many of today's oligarchs are current or former Putin officials. As Putin has consolidated power and asserted state control over more private businesses, a new breed of oligarch emerged, the Silovark. The word combines oligarch and Siloviki, Russian for the country's military and security elite. Many Silovarks know Putin personally from his time in the KGB or from working under him in St. Petersburg during his early post-Soviet political career. Oligarchs face a rocky future as the West punishes Putin's Russia. As of March 14th, 20 of them are under personal sanction by the US and its allies. It no longer seems to matter which side, Russia or Ukraine, they've taken. Oligarchs who've sold their Russian assets and moved their holdings to the West are hurriedly distancing themselves from Putin and his regime. Many of them are being slapped with sanctions anyway. Silovarks and those with Russian assets haven't been protected by Putin, and they've seen their fortunes plummet as Russian markets collapse.